Today we are diving off into a delightfully delicious theme, peaches. <laughs> Get ready to create a stunning peach themed tiered tray masterpiece that will add a touch of sweetness to your home decor. Hi, my name is Leslie and welcome to Happy Tuesday where we do crafts and DIY and home decor and more. Now, if you stick around to the very end, I'll have a hint on one of next week's projects. So sit back, relax, and let's get crafty with this juicy and fun project together. And here's a sneak peek at the eight projects we're going to do today. And let's get started with project number one. I just love this peach basket so much. So you're going to pick up one of these four packs of metal storage containers from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to use the bottom half. Now, if you don't have these, you know, some container, maybe two inches would work and some regular size clothespins. And I use the little wooden apples that you can get in the Dollar Tree fall section. So you're going to take the clothespins apart and we are just going to use the wood part. Now, if you don't have those little apples, you can use beads. And we are going to take the hot glue and we are going to put glue on the bottom little part of that clothespin. And then we are going to space these all the way around. Now at the very end, you'll be left with a space just bigger than one. But if you stick it in the middle, you won't even notice. So once we've got that all completed, then we are going to grab our handy dandy baby wipe and our antique wax or whatever uh, favorite color that you want to paint your basket. And we are going to give it a good coat. I suppose you could also leave it natural, uh, maybe rustic it up a little bit. And once we've got that all done, then we are going to take our twine and we are going to put some twine first in that little indentation at the very top. And I wrapped it around twice to fill that space. And then we are going to make our own wrap on the bottom and you'll just secure that with some hot glue and we'll do one space around the bottom. Now this will need a little bit more hot glue because there isn't a uh, space or a wedge to keep it tight in there. So we're just going to add a little bit of hot glue as we go around and make sure that that stays secure. Now I made another one of these um, for my fall decor and instead of painting those apples as peaches, I painted them as apples. But we're going to paint these as peaches and the peach color paint that I have, I didn't think was dark enough and so I'm actually mixing uh, some of that peach with a little bit of red and a little bit of lemonade yellow and then I'll add a little bit more peach until I get it just the shade I want it. Now if you don't have peach, you can take yellow and red and a little bit of white and make your own peach. So we've got those all done and they're dry. We're going to take some of this brown paper shred where you could use straw or whatever you have and place those peaches in the little basket. And then we're going to make it a little sign. Now for the sign, I just took one of those chalkboard pieces from the Dollar Tree and wrote peaches 25 cents in a chalk marker and then I'm going to use a little skewer and cut it down to size and hot glue that onto the back side and then stick that in and this project is complete. I just love this and that brings us to project number two. I also love this one. These windmills are so cute. So first I'm going to take a piece of scrap cardstock and I'm going to make a little template for myself. And I just did a three by three square and cut that. And up at the top, you will see the uh, fabric that I got from Walmart. And I just got a quarter yard of each, which is more than plenty for all the things we're going to do today and have leftovers. So the windmill actually is a square and it's formed in triangle shapes. And as you can see, that's how it'll go together. Now I went ahead and used my rotary cutter and mat um, to cut the little squares. And I cut them one out of each of the four pieces of fabric. 
And I love this liquid stitch for putting uh, cloth together without having to sew it. If you don't have this, you could use, uh, they make hot glue for cloth, or you could just use regular hot glue, but this doesn't leave the bumpies that hot glue leaves. And so we are going to make sure that you got a good amount all the way around the edge and in the center. And that way it's going to be secure. And we glued the non-printed sides together. Now I'm going to take my little mini press and I'm going to give myself some guides for where we're going to cut it. And so I'm going to make it into triangle one direction and make it into a triangle the other direction and press that so that we know where we're going to be cutting for our pinwheel. And then we'll take our scissors and you'll cut about halfway down that slit. Now if you have any fraying edges, this is the time to clip those off. And now we are going to use Fabric Stiffener. And this is the brand that I use uh, called Spray Bond. And we're going to give it just a light coating on either side. And then we're going to take our parchment paper and cover it and use our Easy Press to help that fabric stiffener set. Now you can spray it as, as stiff as you want it. I just gave it enough to give it some form. And now we're going to use some more of that liquid stitch and place it in the center and then pull in our pinwheel sides towards the center. I um, also grabbed some buttons and we're going to pick one of those buttons to finish out the center and to hold everything securely. So once you've got your pinwheel pieces put together, then grab yourself a, a matching or coordinating button and I found this round one and I just took my little uh, cutters from Harbor Freight and cut off the back side. And then I'm going to add some hot glue on that and stick it right in the center. And we're ready to add our stick on the back. Now I use the barbecue skewers that you get from Dollar Tree. And I actually saw them out again this year. So grab these out of the backyard grilling section because I use them for all kinds of different projects and we're just going to cut it down to size and add a dab of hot glue and this pinwheel is complete. I suppose if you wanted you could make these movable but I didn't care. And that will bring us to project number three, my little peach pillows. <laughs> so I'm going to use three of those same fabrics that I just used for the pinwheels and I just created a little peach shape. Um, actually, what I did is I went on to Design Space and found an empty peach and uh, cut it out. And so that's what I'm going to use as my template. And I got out my little cloth scissors. These my mom gave me. And that little green holder my mom also made for me. So it's always very special when I get a chance to use these. And I had those three pins sitting in there, so it all just worked perfectly. So I'm going to cut two out of each of the shapes. And here comes my liquid stitch again. And we're just going to go around the outside, but not completely all the way around the outside. You have to leave a little bit of room for some filler. So we'll glue all three of those, leaving space for the filler to come in. And uh, then we will be ready to start stiff stuffing stuffing them we're not going to stiffen these we're going to start stuffing those with old pillow fiber or polyfill or whatever you happen to have on hand and i also wanted to leave the space at the top because we're going to add a little stick stem to them so you can see it dries pretty quickly and you've got your space in there to start stuffing these. Now you can stuff these as little or as much as you wanted. I didn't want to make them too fluffy, just kind of pillow fluffy. Oops, I missed a spot, so we'll grab that stitch and stick some more in there. And here's our little stick stem. And we are going to then use our liquid stitch and put it around the edge of the outside so we can glue this complete completely together. And then here we are, all three are done. Now I'm gonna take some muslin or homespun fabric and cut a little piece off. And on one of the 
peaches. We're going to use this as the Thai little uh, leaves. And I brought out my stamp pad from Hobby Lobby and we're going to stamp on it in that brown ink, sweet as a peach. And then on the other two, I've got some scrap green fabric and we're going to tie those around the other two to make their little leaves. And I frayed the edges just a little bit trimmed it down to size and this project will be complete isn't it so stinking cute and it just makes a great addition to my tiered tray i'm honored that you're still here with me don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you'll be notified next time i upload a video and that will bring us to project number four this was last week's preview project. So these are all the items that you're gonna need. And first we're gonna start with the foam wreath from Dollar Tree and the ball of twine from Dollar Tree. Now stick on your favorite movie or show that you wanna watch because this takes a few minutes. And we are going to set a bead of hot glue at the very beginning of where we're gonna start our twine. And we are going to tightly wrap this around the entire wreath. So sit back and relax and just get in a groove of winding this twine. Every so often you're going to have to add another little bead of hot glue to make sure it all stays in place. And you want it so that none of the green is showing through. Now if you didn't want to wrap it as tightly, I suppose you could go in with some spray paint and uh, spray that green wreath first but i didn't see the need to do that so i'm just going to keep wrapping and add a little glue and wrap some more until we get it all the way covered and as you're finishing wrapping it and get all the way to the end you'll want to just adjust everything and make sure it's completely covered and then you will add that one last bead of hot glue and we will move on to the next stage now i just grabbed a twig outside that looked like a tree and that i could shape really easily and had some little branches sticking out and trimmed it down to fit around my wreath and i saved those pieces because we are going to use them in another project and then i just trimmed down the bottom and we will hot glue that in there and this is my inspiration so you have multiple dollar tree options for what you can use to imitate the peaches you've got this stem here or small beads or the little apple pieces or i found this on clearance at hobby lobby like two or three years ago um, and they look like apples to me, but in this case, I can make them look like peaches. So we are going to trim those down and use those. So now I am securing my little branch inside the wreath that we have wrapped with the twine. And we are going to start adding some greenery. Now I did secure it at the top and the bottom. And we will also secure it on the sides when we are gluing on the leaves. Now for the leaves, I used a stem of boxwood from Walmart. This is a $97 stem and I just love it because it's so full and I just pulled all the little pieces off and then I will trim down the little knobby part that sticks on the pick and then we'll add a little bit of hot glue. Now be careful when you add the hot glue uh, if you have it on the hot setting and you put it on that plastic it could melt it so you might either want to just use it uh, lightly or put your glue st stick down to a low temp glue and we are just going to add this greenery all the way around on the branches until they look as full as you want them to get the fullness that I wanted to achieve, I am going to use the entire boxwood pick. And here it is, all fluffy and tree looking like. And now we are gonna take some of these um, pink flowers, or you can ha grab some peach flowers that kind of look like peach tree flowers. And I just grabbed five of those. Um, 
that I had in my craft supplies. And now we're going to cut off five little bundles of these little apple peach looking things and I will place them kind of where I want to see them on the tree and then we are going to give them a nice little coat of paint. You could leave them just like this if you wanted um, but I wanted them to look a little bit closer to what the peach actually looks like. Now to achieve the look that I was going for I'm going to use the color scallion and the color hazelnut by Waverly and I am going to paint on the scallion and then use my little piece of uh, foam there on the side to store those in while they're drying and then a little bit of uh, that hazelnut to kind of mute down that the bright green of that scallion and we'll let those dry and now I'm going to make a little ladder so I am taking some uh, these are dowel pieces and the rungs will be out of the wooden skewer pieces that I had left over from that project with the pinwheels so don't ever throw your scraps away especially wood scraps because you can use them again so I kind of figured out what size I wanted this little ladder to be and I cut my skewer stick so the rungs would be the right size and then I will use a little bit of hot glue and put that together. Now once we've got our ladder all complete we're going to start working on a little fence. So I'm going to take my handy dandy little miter shears and cut little tips onto these uh, craft sticks that I got from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to make some side pieces to go on it and hold the, the uh, fence pickets together and we'll get that all glued together and add that to our wreath. And I think you've heard me say before, the details make the project stand out. So even though it's a little bit time consuming to make a tiny little picket fence, it just added so much cuteness to this wreath. So once we've gotten that picket fence glued together and I'm just using my wood glue by super glue that I got at Dollar Tree, then we will decide where we're going to put it on the wreath and trim it down to size. Now my peaches are all dried, so I'm going to pull those off and set that foam aside. Now you could use scissors to trim these popsicle sticks down, but I've found that sometimes scissors splinters it. And so I'll easy, either use tin snips or my miter shears. It just gives me a cleaner cut. Now once we've gotten those pieces all trimmed off we're gonna add start adding in these peaches to our tree and then hit the last of the finishing touches while i'm adding the peaches i'm also looking at these wooden pieces the and i decided they just needed a little bit of color so i am going to use my antique wax and give it a little bit of stain color and then because it's outside and i wanted it to look like you know, rustic old fence post. I brought out Elephant Gray by Waverly and added a little bit of that. And now it looks kind of like the fence posts that I use in my projects outdoors. So we're going to hot glue those on and then we're going to hot glue on this little ladder after we get it colored. And then we are going to start adding a few more details. Now I found this little bird these little wooden pieces came from dollar tree earlier this spring and i found this butterfly and i'm going to add this little mushroom and then i've gotten some fake fur fern that i'm cutting and making it look like a little bush and we'll add that in there and then you'll see that um, lavender up at the top left and we're going to cut a stem of that and make it into a little bush and get that added and that will complete our project. Again, the details just make it. What do you think? Are you a details person or keep it simple? Let me know in the comments below. Now, don't forget a little moss. What is a mushroom patch without some moss in it? <laughs> And here's the lavender, and the last thing that we need to work on is putting a hanger on it. 
Now I put the hanger on it. I just cut a section of jute and tied a knot and then kind of wrapped that uh, around and then pulled the knot through and that will make my little hanger so you can hang it or I just set it next to my tiered tray because it just all looks so cute together. And that brings us to project number five. This one is super simple and fun and easy, but I found these little clay tools, I guess, at Dollar Tree, along with that air clay at Dollar Tree, and I just wanted to try it out. So I'm taking some Scrabble words that spell peachy, and then I am taking a little bit of this air clay, and I am going to form it into a half a peach. So I cut the little, knot in the center and now I'm making a little stem and then I'll make a little leaf and cut it out and make all the little ridges you know those fine little details and once we've gotten the little ridges on we're gonna add that leaf to our stem and slide it off and then it will fit perfectly on this little scrabble tile the next thing I'm going to do is paint all my little Scrabble tiles white. And at first I thought I would try to figure out a way to not get this all over me because you guys know I end up with paint everywhere. So I'm pulling out my painter's tape and sticking everything to it. And that way I don't have to hold it and get paint all over me. Now we're going to take a detail brush and some of that peach paint and we're just going to go back in where the Scrabble letters have that outline and we are going to uh, paint in the word peachy. And once we've gone over that a couple of times so it has a, a nice dark color, then we will start wrapping this DIY up. And the next thing that we'll need to do is to paint that peach. Normally air clay takes about 72 hours to completely dry, but we're gonna paint it wet. So we gave that peach a little peach color, the leaf a little green color, the stem a little truffle color, and glued that onto the tile. And this is so stinking cute. And that brings us to project number six. I think this one might be my favorite. Now I saw this um, little fruit cart. Now that's a full size one on Pinterest. And I thought, well, I could make a miniature one. So I had some different uh, wheels and I finally chose these ones that came off this Dollar Tree dump truck and I'm just gonna take two off and I will use the other two, I'm sure in another project some other time. And we're gonna get a dowel rod and that will be the center. Then we're gonna take these rectangular pieces that I also got from Dollar Tree and cut those in half and we're gonna use three of those. And I took a larger dowel and glued that to one side and that's gonna be the side of our fruit cart. And I glued another dowel onto the other side and used my nice little Dollar Tree clips to hold that together while it dried. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the sides on because this has a front, but it doesn't have a back. And I am going to get that all glued together. Now you'll notice that one piece is higher than the other piece and that's because one sits on the ground and the other sits on the cart so that it can actually move. And I wanted my wheels to move and so I could actually move the cart. Then I took the small skewers and I added those onto one of the pieces and those will be my handles. And then I took some of these craft sticks and I put seven of them together with that wood glue for one side of the roof and seven together for the other side of the roof and then added another piece on there just to secure all those together. And I'm going to trim down the top part in order to put the roof on so that it can sit properly at an angle. And I will do that to both of the dowel rods for either side of this cart. Once I've gotten that completed, then I will take some of these tumbling tower blocks and I will add those onto the sides. That way it gives me something to glue onto. And I'll add it on both sides of both the top shelf and the bottom shelf of that tray. And I made them go lengthways instead of flat 
and I'm holding them together with my little clamps from Dollar Tree. I wished I had more of those bigger clamps because I use those quite a bit in this project. And then once I've gotten those all dry, then we are going to start adding that with some wood glue onto our front piece and get those tray pieces in there. And then we will get that clamp down so that that can dry. Now I know that you can add a little bit of hot glue on there and it'll stick a little bit faster, but I wanted to have the ability to move it around just a little bit uh, so that I could make sure I liked where it went. And so now I'm trying to figure out where this is gonna sit in relationship to the wheels. And here's how I made my wheels movable. I just added some wire onto either side of the wheel on the dowel stick and then glued that wire down so the wire was secure and wasn't moving anywhere and that way the wheel could still move in between the two pieces of wire. I don't know that it will ever actually move anywhere but the devil's in the details, right? <laughs> it can move and that mattered to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of hot glue onto the base and add those wheels on and see it moves around and once we've got that part down then we are going to work on attaching our roof just a little bit of hot glue on either side and then i'm sorry wood glue on either side and then just hold it we're going to give it all, all a complete coat of white chalk paint and then we will start adding on a little bit of color now for my color, I found these napkins at Dollar Tree and I just knew this was the perfect peachy thing. So we're gonna take one layer off and we're gonna decoupage this on. So I am trimming it down and figuring out where I want it to sit and trim that down. And then I'll add some Mod Podge onto half and put that napkin down and then kind of smooth it out. You've gotta be really careful cause it'll rip really easily and get the other side Mod Podged and put that down. And it had a nice little texture, which I thought was kind of cool for that roof. Once we've got that done, I'm gonna take my heavy duty nail file and just briefly run that file over the edge so that I can pull those edges off and it's a nice clean edge and give it another coat of Mod Podge on the top so that that stays secure. And then I printed this little farmer's market piece in my printer on some tissue paper and we are going to decoupage that onto the front now i just kind of cut that off my piece of paper and then tore the little edges so that it would have a a good edge for decoupaging it on and what cart is complete without some peaches so i took some beads from dollar tree and put them on a little skewer so I didn't have to hold them and then put them on my little triangle paint dryers that I got on Timu and gave it a nice little coat of peach paint. Now for my baskets that I am covering with some antique wax, I used the little flower pots from the Dollar Tree. And here's that leftover stem from earlier and I'm just cutting little stem pieces that have little nodes on them to make them look like leaves and I am adding those all into my little pots with a little bit of glue to help it all stay. And I'll glue the pots onto the cart. And this project is done. Isn't it beautiful? I do have to say, I think this is one of my favorites. And that brings us to project number seven. I wanted a wire art piece for my tiered tray. So I found a continuous line art peach and some wire and this eye coordinator, which I will show you how to use. Now I bought this because I wanna make some wire art as Christmas presents this year. So I will have this wire linked below. I wanted a thicker wire for this particular project since it's gonna be sitting on my tiered tray. And this is a different wire than some of the other thicker wire that I've used before. This one seems to be a little bit more malleable. I did learn in doing this that you don't want to unravel it from itself to get started. It's much easier if it's still in that circle. 
So I'm going to follow the line art and use my pliers and move this wire around this piece until I get this peach and leaves looking just the way I want it to look. Now once I've gotten that done, then I'm going to take some of that green knitted macrame cord that I bought at Hobby Lobby a while back and I am going to put that around the green stem and leaves. Now that is actually a thinner product uh, that green is and so it was a little bit more struggle to go on this thicker wire uh, than it was for the thinner wire project I used it on before. But there's the peach all complete and here we're going to go ahead and get started. Now I, I did need to trim the end uh, to give me a good space to start with and you'll see there's a little hole in the center. You want to find that hole and then pull the wire through that hole until you get the space that you want all completely covered. And once I've gotten that completely covered, I'm going to trim the green off and then I am going to start working on making a peach. Now I'm not going to tell you how much it took me to learn how to do this silly little I-cord knit. Um, you can actually crochet I-cord. It just takes longer than this little knitter. But here's how you do it. So there's a little feeder piece at the bottom and then a feeder piece at the top. And then you'll take the end of that cord and you'll run it all the way down until it comes out the other side. Now, this comes with a weight, which you see over there on the right, and we are gonna put the weight down at the end once it comes through. Now, the weight has a little push button thing so you can get to the center hole, and so you'll push that in and you'll see the center hole, and then you'll put your cord through that hole and release it, and that will weight your yarn so that it will go through, what you knit will come through the tunnel. So we are going to put that weight on the back side of the knitter for now. And then we are going to start adding the yarn on. Now you want to make sure all these little hook pieces are down and it comes with this little crochet hook. So you can use that to push those all down. And you want to make sure that it catches on the first one, goes behind the second one, catches on the third one, goes behind the fourth one, and then it'll catch on every single one from there forward. Now the, the mechanics of what's happening here is it catches on the first one, and as it catches on the first one and comes around, then that first one, the bottom loop is going to come over the knitter and be, go on the other side. Now you want to make sure those little hooks come down as you come across here and then the bottom cord will go over and you'll pick up another cord. So this is actually done in real time so you can see how slowly I was putting this together to make sure all the pieces came. Now I got to this point and you can see it wasn't going to where it should be and after an embarrassing number of hours of trying to figure out how to make this work because all the YouTube videos I watched made it look so simple, I realized that my yarn was too thick and that was my problem. So I found another piece of or skein of yarn in my craft supplies that was thinner and a similar color and we're going to use this and so we'll catch the first second will go behind catch the second the third fourth will go behind and then we will start catching each one and this thinner yarn it just went exactly the way it should there goes the weight so that it will pull it down and again this is in real time so we're going much faster than we did on the last one and you can see it's forming that knitted piece and it's being pulled down and as it, everything is catching and I'm feeling good about this I can go faster and faster until we get the whole eye cord knitted now I am loosely holding that piece of yarn on the left hand side 
and I put the skein down on the ground so that I didn't have to worry about that and we're just knitting away it's going just like it should and then we made this really long eye cord you back it all off and that'll make it come off and you trim it and voila now to finish it off I took a doll needle or a yarn needle and thread that end through and thread it through the four hoops and that is that so now we're just going to wrap it around this peach and then we are going to hot glue all the ends in place to make it stay and then this project will be complete and I love it and I'm so glad that I finally figured out how to use that eye knitter I will link that eye cord knitter by Tulip below so if you'd like to get it you can have the link and be able to find it on Amazon so here we are just finishing it off now I know there is a way and I haven't learned this part how to actually sew those knitted pieces together instead of using hot glue to finish them off but I think it looked just perfect with the hot glue finishing it off and securing all the edges together and the ends together and it didn't leave any residue or anything and I just think this looks so adorable what do you think would this be a project that you'd like to complete here it is all completed and I think it's just adorable and that will bring us to our final project project number eight and I just love this little sign so I found these little pennant pieces it came in a pack of I want to say 30 or something at Hobby Lobby on clearance or it might have been Michael's I don't remember but it was in their clearance bins and we're going to take one side and we are going to paint Mod Podge on that one side and then we're going to let that dry and I am going to use some of that matching fabric that we got from Walmart uh, and used in the earlier projects and then I pulled out some little tiny letters I had and painted them a truffle color so that that will be done by the time these pennants are dried and then we'll just take the pennants and we'll stick it up underneath the fabric and use my mini press and this is the iron-on method of decoupage and then once that's all on and secure then we're going to take our scissors and cut these out and you can just run your scissors right along the edge and that gives it a nice clean edge and that piece was just popping up just a little bit so we're going to add another little dose of heat there and trim out the next one and once you've gotten all the pieces trimmed out and done I took my little hobby knife and cut little slits where the holes are so that I can hang this little pennant sign and now we'll add our farm fresh onto the front of our pennants and we'll hot glue those on and then we are going to take our twine and I ran it through a doll needle and we are going to string our pennants and finish up this project. I just love the way this completed out my tiered tray and I think it is just so stinking cute. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I really did enjoy our time together. Now, since you stuck around till the very end, I have a hint on one of next week's projects. We are going back outdoors and you'll need some more scrap wood. I've got my old fence post pieces. You can grab whatever scrap wood you have. But until then, make it a great day and happy Tuesday!